I welcome Esam Esarat with me here. You are the R&D director of GOLD, which is the Gulf Organization of Research and Development in Qatar, one of the Gulf states. And your organization recently became sponsor of the solar heating and cooling program. So what is your particular interest in this, in this research program? Um, as you know, we are in, based in hot, uh, humid climates. So well, this is the best uh, place you actually implement the solar cooling. So uh, uh, unlike Europe, Europe they could have they have cold climates and maybe very short summer, you know, in terms of hot uh, climate compared to our region. So our cooling requirements around two thirds of our electricity consumption is coming from cooling in domestic applications. So it's really massive, massive energy consumption compared to Europe. So we think even uh, we should contribute from earlier stages on this, uh, our partnership with the ISHC programs, uh, because we're going to benefit the region. So your research institutes, you have also uh, R&D projects on solar cooling running at the moment? Yes, yes, of course. We, part of our interest, it's a main interest to do uh, solar cooling. Myself, I have also some funds for solar cooling as well. Uh, we have Qatar National Research Funds. They also, they get, give some uh, um, funds for doing uh, different research programs, and as Gord, we got funds for solar cooling uh, research as well. What is the largest uh, ex installation on solar cooling in your country so far? Uh, as you know, the uh, solar cooling people, they moving, are moving gradually because you have to change, actually, behavior from installation types to different installations. So it's not really to be an easy task to come and just next day to move the whole country to solar cooling, especially solar cooling itself, it needs bigger space. So because you need to look at the uh, solar technologies with the space you need, the sp we have massive uh, cooling loads. So the, actually the area required to provide the, the cooling is also will be huge. And also the ch uh, absorption chillers technology or the technology available right now need to be verified and tested in these climates because we have very harsh climate where should be run not, not unlike dry uh, uh, absorption chillers. We need to run wet cooling, uh, wet uh, absorption cooler. So we need to dry, well, uh, water is an issue in, in, in that region. Also we need to think about water. So we need to think about desalination. So it's not really one system could solve the problem because also you need cooling and we don't have water as well. So water also is one of the, our priorities. So we need to think about all of these balance, how it could be done right in a proper way, in a perfect way. So do you have convinced uh, politicians or, well, heads of your countries in solar cooling supporting that idea? Yeah, the solar cooling is basic there. So everyone knows the science about it. No, everyone can do the trials about it. But doing for mass, mass scale, this, it should be very wise studied because you need to see what is the objective, what is it dri uh, driving for it. Is it economical? Is it environmental? Is it social? Is it all of this together? So we need to actually to provide the full modeling process. From this outcome of this modeling, then we can come and say, you have to do this portion solar, you have to do this portion electrical, you have to do this portion. So it's not it's not easy to be done like that as a decision in terms of policy making. But as I, as I mentioned, it's, there is a big awareness about it, but there is uh, also scare about the, what is the, the consequences uh, about these systems for testing for long term. Absorption chillers already proven, but it could be that natural gas driven, which is okay, you know, like uh, well tested. But for solar cooling, it needs actually gradual implementation in the in the region. So, will the Football Cup 2022 uh, be sort of a key point when you can present the first uh, solar cooling issues or installations in your country? Actually, the, uh, just let me do two points here. The whole countries, for example, the GCC countries, they use the district cooling as well known as a district cooling process. It's well known, well implemented, it's, uh, which is really high efficient as well, using uh, thermal stores. So all of this together, integrating the solar cooling within the district cooling could be now uh, the, 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 the idea now. It's, no, it's not coming back as a solar cooling as standalone. So building a district system, and now we need to understand how many percent is it 5%, 10% could be implemented as part of this district, uh, district cooling? And also to look about the loads, the base loads, uh, etc. So with this way, we can come back with an optimum uh, system design where we can implement high efficient systems like district cooling. And at the same time, we implement the solar cooling uh, uh, technology. Uh, as uh, for, for example, the first stadium built as a prototype, which is a... Um, 
is used completely solar uh, absorption cooling. It's a prototype stadi stadium and PVs to run the pumps for that system. So it's actually running out of uh, grid. But really, if you see the, the load is massive, huge, as I mentioned. So an area is big for a small stadium. So also you need to be very wise about the space, about what you want, the objectives, the contribution, the problems, the... Uh, uh, maintenance, a lot of things, so... Well, but I'm still convinced that we will hear much more on solar from your region in the, in the future, so I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm.